was very big for Berkshire, and that was Petra China stock. Mm -hmm. A lot of people interested in your purchase and subsequent sale of Petro China. This is a controversial stock for our viewers who aren't familiar with it because the parent company, China National Petroleum, um, had some dealings with the Sudanese government that, of course, the Bush administration has said is responsible in part for the genocide in Darfur. I watched in May at your annual meeting where shareholders came up, some of them, very unhappy and right. wanted you to divest. You disagreed. You took a shareholder vote. Most shareholders agreed with you. You did not divest. That was May. Now, since September, you've been selling. Have you sold your entire stake of PetroChina? Yeah, we, we've sold it, 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 but we sold it based on price. It had nothing to, I mean, it, it, I think at the time of the annual meeting, it was around, uh, in terms of the American stock, it was around 110, and uh, I, I think it's more than double since then. Unfortunately, I sold a little too soon, but it was it was 100% a decision based on valuation. When we bought PetroChina, the whole company was selling for $35 billion, if you take the number of shares and multiply by the price. When we sold it, it was at varying prices, but it was at about uh, eight times that price, wow. about, about 275, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, uh, it was more, the original price was 20 in terms of U.S. We sold it from 160 to 200 or something like that. A nice tidy profit. Yeah, we made, we made about three and a half billion dollars on it. $500 million investment, as it turned out. I still sold it way too soon. <laughs> Since I sold it, they must have shot a gun off and said, my warrant sold, now it's time to let it go up. <laughs> oh, yeah, you left money on the table. A lot of money. Dummy. That's Dummy, what, that's, that's exactly what right. Charlie Munger would say, I, I, right? Uh, Charlie, would, Charlie would say, you've done it again. But you can't <laughs> keep always trying for the average person who's maybe never bought a stock before. What's your advice about that? You can't constantly sit there and wait and say, oh, it's going to go higher, it's oh, going to go higher. We, we don't even think about that. What we think about is how much is it selling for, how much do we think it's worth. When we bought it at $35 billion effectively, I felt the company was probably worth at least $100 billion. How did it come to your attention? How do you find a stock like PetroChina? I sit there in my office and I read an annual report, which fortunately was in English, and it <laughs> described a very good company. And uh, told about the oil reserves, told about the refining, told about the chemicals, everything else. And I sat there and read it, and I thought to myself, this company is worth about $100 billion. Now, I didn't look at the price first. I look at the business first and try and figure out what it's worth, because if I look at the price first, I'll get influenced by that. So I look at the, I look at the company first. I try to value it, and then I look at the price, and if the price is way less than what I've just valued it at, I'm going to buy it. And how do you value it? Well, I, that's, that's the trick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's essentially what I would pay for the whole business if I could buy it. And uh, uh, when we sold the company stock, it was valued, we'll say, at what, seven, probably 250 to 275 billion. And we thought that was a fair price. Now, oil had gone up from $30 a barrel to $75 a barrel. Now it's up even further. But today, I, well, yesterday anyway, I believe PetroChina is the second most highly valued company in the world. Second Higher than what? GE, next to Exxon. Exxon Mobil. Next to Exxon. Have you sold the entire stake? Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. I wish I hadn't, but I have. As of when? Well, it, we sold it over a period of time. Sold it over a period yeah. of time. If it went down a lot, we'd buy it back. <clears throat> Would you ever buy it or, or sell a stock based on political pressure or, or no. sort of... So no, the answer nothing, is no. <laughs> people being upset about Darfur had nothing to do no. with why you sold no, this the stock. The Chinese government owns 88% of PetroChina. They also own control of 29 out of the 30 largest companies in China. The, the Chinese government is the one that has a position in relation to the Sudan. And they have it... If you own any one of the 30 largest companies in, 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 in publicly traded companies in China, you will have the Chinese government as your majority partner. And the question is, are you responsible for their actions? You're going to China next week for a ribbon cutting ceremony right. for ISCAR. One of <laughs> sort of the one. limit of my abilities, Liz. I mean, that's what they use. This. You're pretty good at cutting a ribbon. I've, I've gotten used to it. Yeah. Are you looking at other companies in China? I don't I don't look based, no, the answer is pretty much no, but I don't look based on, on countries or that sort of thing. I just, I just read every report I can and I try and figure out whether something is cheap. But how would you find a report like PetroChina four years ago? This was mm. not a name that maybe that, that a lot of people would... Know. Other guys read Playboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read mean, annual reports. <laughs> Are there any and this was a great center. <laughs> this is a great centerfold, actually, <laughs> when I hit PetroChina. And, and that's that's what I do. I mean, that's my job, is to allocate capital. And the way I allocate capital is by looking at the opportunities for using capital.